real quick before we go, um, I want to touch on a couple other things that are important. One is that you develop a solid routine. Um, because baseball is a hard game, we all know that. It's a failure-oriented game. Guys put pressure on themselves. Um, you know, i got to get a hit. got to got to drive the guy in. All those bad thoughts that are in your head, you got to develop a routine for your at-bats that give you a chance to have the same uh, the same approach every single time you step into the box. And well, I'll just tell you what our guys do. I see your bat. Okay, all right, our, our, our at-bat routine starts in the dugout when they put their gloves on, okay? They start getting locked in. They start... Um, they start watching the pitcher on what he's doing and his, and his delivery and when they're going to have to start their load. Then they go to the on-deck circle, okay? They're in the on-deck circle just like the hitter every single time. You watch our guys, they'll be loading every single time. Just like the hitter, they're going to watch the coach give the signs and they're going to go back and they're going to be just like they're in the box. And they're going to work on their load every single time so that when they step in the box, they're ready to go. And then as they walk into the box, this is what we have our guys do and they do it every single time. No matter what the situation, no matter who we're playing, this is what you'll see every single time. They're going to walk up with their chest out, okay? They're going to be confident. They're going to walk out with their chest out. They're going to wipe the box clean to let everybody in the ballpark know that that's their box. They're going to put their foot in. They're going to get the sign from me. Then they're going to look at the trademark, right? Then they're going to think, they're going to think a positive thought, and they're going to take a deep breath. Okay? And that's going to relax them. What it also does is it lets everybody in the ballpark know that they're playing the game one pitch at a time. So big deep breath, they step in the box, all right? And all they're going to do here is they're going to have, we, we, we have each guy come up with some positive self-talk. Like you might be just saying, stay back, stay back. Whatever you want to say to yourself is positive so that it's the same time. It's the same every time, whether it's nobody on base in the first inning of a no-account game where it's the ninth inning of the College World Series with the bases loaded and you're down two runs. It's got to be the same every time. And that's the whole point of telling you this. If you can get into a good routine, you can take a lot of those things, those pressure things and those negative thoughts that come into your mind out of it by having a solid routine and sticking to it each time. And that's what our guys will do. They'll have a they'll have their routine, positive self-talk, boom, swing and a miss. Wipe the box clean, that pitch is gone, We're gonna not, nothing I can do about that pitch. Get the sign, check the trademark, deep breaths, back in the box, lock back in, positive self-talk, boom, outside corner, umpire just called a strike, it was probably six inches outside, it was a ball. All our guys will do is wipe it away, because there's nothing <coughs> they can do about it. Deep breath, back to work, boom, swing and a miss, just struck out. What are we going to do? This? No, we're going to stick our chest out, and we're going to walk to the guy in the on-deck circle. So you can hit him, he's not that good, and you're going to go to the dugout, even though you're mad, you're going to sit down, okay? And what we do with other guys is we ask them to come up with a release. For some guys, the release might be take the batting gloves off, put them in your pocket, take your helmet off, put it in the rack, put your bat away. But you've got to do something to signify that that at-bat is over and you're not going to let it affect the rest of your day. Does that make sense? That's what our guys do. So when they put the bat in the rack, it's over. Or when they put their gloves in their pocket and go to their position, it's old. Okay? But you can be mad until you do that. I don't have a problem with that. But once you put it away, it's done. And you move forward. Because that's what will kill you in this game, is letting what has happened in the past affect what you're doing in the, in the present. with how you walk to the plate. Okay. Well, my name is called, um, I hold the, the bat by the barrel because uh, it's like, that's the most aggressive part of the bat, so that's where I want to hold it. And then I walk up with some swagger and uh, I dust the box out just to kind of get a fresh, new start, new beginning, new pitch. I take one step in. I look at the E on my bat, take a deep breath. And then I point towards the pitcher again, let her know, bring me your best stuff. And then I take another deep breath. And then as I'm in my routine, I'm rocking, or I have some rhythm, and my swing thought is, see it, see it, see it. And Good. Then my swing. Okay, and let's say you get yourself into red lights. What are you going to do to release the red lights? I take a step back. 
back. Put the barrel, barrel of the, my bat underneath my arm. Undo my batting gloves. Adjust them. Step back in. Take another deep breath. Point towards the pitcher again. One more deep breath. And then I'm ready for my swing thought again. See it. See it. Okay, pitcher throws a pitch, it's a ball. You go back into just your green light or refocus routine. What do you do there? Um, maybe adjust my shoulders, you know, in between pitch and point at the pitcher. <sighs> and take a deep breath, and I'm ready again. So the majority of the time, your routine is going to look like what? Show us. Majority of my time, from the beginning? No, 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 just it, pitch okay, to pitch. If, there's, if I see no red lights, mainly green lights, then ball. Take a step out, adjust the shoulders. Deep breath, and I'm ready to go. Excellent. And let's say you strike out. How do you walk back to the dugout? Same way I walked up to the plate. Big. And when is your wrap out over? Um, once I feel like I'm ready to release the negative thoughts about the bat, or even just the bat itself, as soon as I take my gloves off, I'm no longer on offense. In my mind, I'm switching over to defense. So when the batting gloves come off, that at bat is over. Yep, when the batting gloves come off, the at bat is over. Three, which is create a green light routine. So thinking in terms of acting confident, the, we've covered the main things really. It's, it's the, your, your posture, how you're carrying yourself, and really being aware of, of how you're moving with your body. And for the most part, that's going to be some type of head up. Boom, that's why we call the book Heads Up Baseball, because I want their head up. When you stand confidently, the confident thoughts come. You know, in interviewing people like uh, listening to Dennis Eckersley, uh, Reggie Jackson, not much of a pitcher, but certainly a guy known for his physical presence. He said he carried himself, whether he felt confident or not, he told me, he's like, carry myself like I'm the man. And that is, that's the number one thing. If I could only give you one thing to boost your confidence, I would say make sure you act confident. So nothing really to add there other than just that reminder. The breath. Let me show you uh, a few things with the breath that are choices. I, as I mentioned, I want you to take at least one. One is simply to, after, after you get the ball back, as you're coming back here, inhale and exhale. This is where you're checking your traffic light to see how am I doing. If I still feel good, if it's green, you go right into the green light routine. If, if you feel, if you don't feel so good, then going, you need to go back and we'll get to the yellow right routine in a moment. Um, but that breath helps you check in. That breath uh, that, that comes after you've, gotten, you've got the ball back, maybe hopefully it's from the catcher, maybe it's even from the umpire. <laughs> we don't really want that. Uh, after uh, the guys running the bases and the music going, you take a little breath and feel how you're, how you're, do, how you're doing. Uh, that's what our feelings are. Our feelings are signals. They're telling us how things are going. They're just like your dashboard on a car. They're telling you what's going on. So you want to check the dashboard in, uh, of yourself and see what's going on. So you can take a breath there. Another place you can take a breath is behind the rubber before you step on. You might doing this. Boom, and then you step on. Because what's really, really critical is that you don't step on the rubber until you're ready. You don't step on the rubber until you're on to this pitch. If you're upset about what happened about the last pitch for crying out loud, you gotta get back off. We just imagine that it says ready on here and you don't step on until you're ready. So taking a breath here can help with that. You could step on, let the breath go and now get your sign. So that's helping me get centered so I can think uh, clearly about what I want to do is connect with your target. So um, there's different ways to do it. One is what you're saying, which is jumping into the D, declaring, okay, this pitch is going right there or low and away or however you described it. Um, and another way is to picture it. 
is to visualize it. It's one of my favorite ways. Interviewing Bert Blylevin, uh, um, he was like, visualization is concentration. If you'll, if you'll stand here and say, okay, I'm fastball uh, outside, I've got my target, take my breath and see the ball go there, just the last few feet, like a little, see the ball go there, that, then you're focused. You can't, it doesn't mean you have to do that to focus, but in order to do that, you have to focus. So I love to have guys play with seeing if they can see the last few feet of a pitch before, before they start. Mm -hmm. It's very much like a request. In a lot of ways, what we're doing is giving your body through the routine is programming your body or making a request. Say, I would like the ball to go right there looking like that and then go. <laughs> okay. And then, the, then that's the trust part is the body just takes over. You just say, okay, do that, please. And as you're picturing it, that's essentially what you're doing. So that's the, uh, the C, connect to it. You can just look at it, that's connecting, mm -hmm. and or you can play with visualizing it. Great, and the way to practice it is just to do it. Anytime you pick up a ball, see if you can see the last few feet. No one really, people get hung up. It's like, oh, I can't see it very well. And they think everyone else is seeing this perfect ball like in a movie, <laughs> going right. And it's not. It's usually like some kind of feel or like there's a tracer or there's a, it's just something. A mat, whatever you do is going to be way better than not doing it. I think bullpens would be a good place to oh, work on this too. For sure. For sure. For sure. And that's, and we'll get to that when we talk practice, but that's a, a huge element of it for sure. Your, 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 the homework right now would be to go and practice this. Practice it in your room, you know, write it down. Practice it. Practice it when you're throwing your pens. Practice visualizing when you, when you, even when you're just throwing with a guy. See if you can picture the ball going in right as you're getting ready to throw. And uh, work on it, you know, and put yourself in different situations and really make it as real as you can. Imagine, oh, I just walked a guy. Go through your yellow light routine. Use it in your bullpens. And so it becomes, that's what I do because you want to make practice just like a game, so in a game it's just like practice.